What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of La Liga Career Mode. This is episode number 34. We're starting today's episode off with Villarreal. Yes, our arch nemesis in this save, Unai Emery's team after an incredible start this season with the leading scorer, Dan Juma, up top for them. And Villarreal right now, top of the league as well, currently chasing La Liga title. As for us, no losses in our last four in all competitions. Three straight wins in La Liga, courtesy of that late winner from Randy and Teca in our 2-1 victory over Ibar in the last game in the last episode. But heading into this one, whilst we did beat Villarreal here last season, that was our only win against Unai Emery's yellow submarine so far of the save. I felt as though our winning run might be ended by the top form team this year. It started off seeming like that would be the case as well. Five minutes in, Dan Juma, top scorer in La Liga this year, testing Maximiano. Great save by our number one, though, keeping it. Goal listening from the corner, headed just off target. It was still 0-0. So early pressure from the early pace setters, as you'd expect. Still goalless, but after a little good run of form for Granada recently, obviously had that big loss to Almeria not too long ago. But since then, no losses in four, three straight wins in La Liga. I felt we could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Villarreal. And despite a tough early start, we had looked pretty good ourselves. Got a couple of good chances and nine minutes in we would open the lead as well. You know, we spent big on our two starters in our team this year. Unai Ventador and Nico Williams as well. I've got to say, man, they've been brilliant investments. Great finish with a week on left foot and a half volley. And I love Thiago here as well on the line. I had to show you the replay there in case you missed it first time. Look, the ball's crossed the line. You know, it's gone in because of the goal decision system. Everyone's going to know that. But, mate, do you just want to put in a bit of effort, you know, instead of just boot the ball back into your own net? It's so funny. It's not the first time I've seen that. But because the AI, as I mentioned before, they don't... Oh, look at this, by the way. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, I missed the golden chance. The fans' reaction said it the best. I totally forgot about that highlight there. Nico Williams, who scored the first goal. Rainbow flicking over Spinazzola, offloading to Suarez and how did I blaze that so far off target? I was so mad at myself after that moment there because that would have been one of the best assists ever. And Williams in the first half was turning. It's a uh, Ter Terry Spinazzola, a new one. He did get an assist 44 minutes in after a textbook first half, whipping the ball and after beating the Italian. And there is Luis Mia to make it 2 0. But yeah, because the AI, like, because, you know, it's coded into the game, they will know as soon as the ball's crossed the line. They're not going to hammer the circle button down like you would, like a madman, when the ball is close to the goal line they'll know like the, the the millisecond the ball has crossed the line it's a goal so they'll they'll just sort of like either leave the ball or hoof it backwards like that it was so funny but even so we're leading by two and then 48 minutes in oh mate this goal is absolutely running the show Nico Williams in this game could have had two assists a hat trick fired that shot just wide there we're still leading by two and whilst Villarreal had a good start to the game we'd really responded since then on the stroke of the hour mark Jeremy Pino denied by Maximiano that was how the game would finish and maybe just maybe this is the game where I realized it's over you know our struggles against Villarreal game after game it's over now it was a bit of a meme every time we faced these guys it was a guaranteed three points through an IMRI side but now maybe just maybe the tables have indeed turned Nico Williams tore Villarreal apart in this game particularly in the first half and a 2-0 victory gives us a big clean sheet we don't get many and it does mean as we end as uh, October you see the league table now we're up to third one point behind Villarreal we now have a better head-to-head -head record in them and Atletico Madrid as well yep third place remaining in the top four and only one point behind second and the league leaders Villarreal too. I'm not going to talk too much about our title chances because I know that whenever I start to do that, that's when I choke. I mean, come on, man. How many times do you hear me say it? Like, we're making progression in an RTG. And as soon as I say something like, oh, do you know what? Top four, genuine possibility. And we end up finishing eighth or something, you know, or like, you know, <laughs> like this. Do you know what? Outside shot of the title. And then we go on like a five game winless run. So I'm I'm not going to talk much about it. But right now, this is this is the closest we've been to leading the league. One point off the top two. And we've got the better head to head record than the current league leaders as well. It's 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 good. It's really good. Four wins in a row now in La Liga as well. And no defeats in our last five. Finally, we're starting to click. But for the following game here, this is a massive one. First game of November, Thursday night. And you've seen it. Three games into the group stage in the Europa League. 
It's only 1 once, and that came against Applewell in Cyprus. Frankfurt currently lead the group. As we expected, they are going to be the strongest team in the group, as we thought they would be, being the holders in real life. Of course, Strasbourg gave us a great battle in France recently that finished 3-3. So heading into the reverse fixture, we couldn't afford to lose this game. Because if we lost it, Strasbourg would leapfrog us in a table. And don't forget, they would have the bare head-to-head -head record. So because of that, this is what you call a must-not-lose game. Simple as that. We lose this game, destiny is out of our own hands, and we're in major, major to trouble. So heading into the game, we took the early lead. This guy right now is on fire. Nico wins with another, but 42 minutes in. You know those moments where you kind of hold your breath? This was one of them. Play continued after Randy and Tecker at the crossbar, but who was the man that went for the rebound aerial duel? Luis Javier Suarez. And number nine hits the deck. Very, very awkward landing. And I mentioned that I can just tell in FIFA Carimo nowadays for playing so long how bad an injury it's probably going to be. That to me looked like a several month injury. It was definitely not a four week. It was definitely not a five day bruise. That looked bad. So Suarez forced off and after that momentum totally changed. Now heading into the lead up to that moment there, we were in control. We were toppling Strasbourg. We were looking very, very confident, very, very comfortable. The French side hadn't really caused us a problem, but it's funny, isn't it, in football? Like sometimes when like a major moment like that happens and they see like one of the top players of an opponent team forced off for injury or taken off for tactical reasons, they just gain like optimism and gain, um, you know, positivity that they can get something out of the game. It's funny how that happens in football. It happens all the time. And that's exactly what happened in this game. As soon as Suarez went off, the second half belonged to Strasbourg. In the first half, they'd done nothing. In the second half, it was all Strasbourg. And they found a late leveler through Caprari. So, just like in France, a draw against Strasbourg. And as for the injury for Suarez... Two months. It's not as bad as it could have been. I didn't think it would be an ACL. I didn't think it would be an ACL because I mentioned before I played the game for so long now I can normally can tell how bad an injury is going to be. I thought it would be a two to three month injury there. And that's exactly what it is. Broken metatarsal uh, for Luis Javier Suarez. It's still a bad blow and Randy and Tecker is going to come in. The only... Good news, if you will, or the saving grace, if you will, is that right now, Randy and Tecker has been absolutely superb. So it's, a, it's a big blow, don't get me wrong, but I trust Randy to fire in the goals in his absence. But you see the table here, it's it's tight, man. Frankfurt are through, just give them the buy into the last 16, the last 32, they're, they're through. Frankfurt are definitely going through, but for, for us and Strasbourg right now, and even Applewell, to be fair, they've got two points, bottom of the group, they could still pull off a shock, win back to back, and end up finishing in second place. It's unlikely, but it is possible. With Strasbourg right now, it's, it's nervy, because match day five is away in Germany against Eintracht Frankfurt. We lose that game, which, let's be honest here, is very likely as they are the clear favourites to top this group now. We're in trouble. Strasbourg are probably going to beat Applewell. They win that game. We'll head into match day six against the Cypriots in third. So it's very nervy indeed. We've lost Suarez to a two-month injury. We can't get the better of Strasbourg. Our Europa League qualification still remains in doubt. And for the final game of today's episode here, Getafe away. This was going to be a tough test. No Suarez on the back of a disappointing draw. No attacky still, of course. How are we going to respond without two of our very best players? Well, Getafe away. Didn't play well in the first half. Had very few chances. But five minutes after the restart, Get in! And, you know, sometimes you just need your older reliables to step up. You know, when you're in a tough time, when you're having a tough period, you just need those old dependables to step up. For the game, you would have noticed it after Thursday night against Strasbourg. And Tekka was too tired to play this one. So I played VR up top in this game as a false nine. He can definitely do that with the stats he's got. He's not the quickest, but technically he's amazing. Operate him as a false nine so I can drag other players into uh, more attacking positions, primarily the wingers, but also Luis Mia, our box to box in this team, and exactly what happens for our first goal. Receives the ball from Nico, holds it up, offloads to Mia. Luis makes it one, and then soon afterwards, well, I've talked about it. This guy is a winger, he's not the quickest, but technically, as I mentioned earlier. 
He's incredible. Antonio VR sets up the first and scores the second. Bangs one in. Top Beans and Granada are going to get the win. And late on in the game, what a save by Maximiano to ensure we will keep the clean sheet as well. We don't get many, but back to back in La Liga and a big win against Getafe. The kid and the energetic box to box midfielder see us get the win with the two goals there for Antonio. Well, maybe, just maybe, I said heading into the game, I think. Randy will take Suarez's place right now as our out and out striker with his great goal to game ratio. But it's nice to know if there are games where the Frenchman's too tired to play, like in this one, for example, and can play VR as a false nine. Well, in his first test leading the line, let's just say he passed it with flying colours. An assist and then the goal for the dagger. 2 0 over Getafe. And this is what you got to do. What did we say in the last episode? Grind it out. Tough times make tough teams, no doubt about that. And for Granada, our great run in La Liga continues. Yes, in Europe, it's been very, very tough in our debut year in the Europa League. But right now in La Liga, keeping pace with Villarreal, keeping pace with Fleck and Madrid, not letting the, uh, the, the sides above us right now with far better quality go. You see VR, by the way, as well. I'm going to put him back on a balanced development plan, too. He's growing so quickly. He's up to 80 overall now. His stats are incredible. And I'm going to put him back on balance now because his future as a position in this team is now a bit uncertain. But one thing is for certain, right now, one point beyond Villarreal, a third of the way through the season, we're not giving up on what are crazy, crazy optimistic title dreams. But that will in today's episode of La Liga Karuma, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of La Liga Career Mode very soon.